thank you very, very much, Jana and Matthew. And before we start, I wanted to ask you all to give another very big round of applause for PR Week. <laughs> and as Jana said, we are so excited about this exhibition and so excited uh, and grateful to Pierre, not only for the show, but for really more than 20 years of friendship. And it's uh, the first time actually we're working on a solo show, on a big museum solo show. Since 12 years ago, we did the exhibition at the Musée d'Art Moderne yeah. de la Ville de Paris, which was a celebration park, which was an unforgettable experience as well, where we worked on this oversized set of doors, which you created, which were dancing through the space. They appeared mm -hmm. and disappeared. And it's uh, an exhibition which uh, also came, uh, came to London. And uh, we thought tonight um, it would be interesting to talk less about the past, but about uh, very recent experiences in a way which led, of course, to the exhibition here at the Serpentine, which we opened uh, yesterday. And very much so, of course, related to this idea you've developed of exhibitions being uh, ecosystems, thinking about Antild in Castle in 2012 with Carlo and Christoph Bagakiev, who is here tonight, which is wonderful, who curated um, the documenta. And then, of course, last year, after a life ahead in Münster with Caspar Koenig for the Münster Sculpture Projects. And uh, both of these projects, of course, happened outside the space or outside the confines of the museum. So it's very fascinating how now these experiences with ecosystem uh, is entering. Yeah, exactly, back in. <laughs> now, before we start to talk about those experiences, I wanted to ask you about what was just before Castle, because in a way it led to Castle and it led to these ecosystems. And that was the project, the host and the cloud. And you told me once that there you wanted something that went beyond the ability to understand. And um, in a way it was... Or to be understood. Yeah, or to, to be, be understood. Or to be, yeah. So I wanted to ask you to tell us about that, about the host and the cloud and how that led somehow to... So it's still, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's an old project now, becoming an old project, but um, maybe we should say that he, he, it, it's the site. Maybe we should start with the site in a certain way. The, 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 it happened in, the, in an old museum, on an old, a museum that was just finishing to be a museum. Uh, I would say it was a folk museum. Maybe that's the best... Uh, best way to say it, um, uh, and an abandoned now museum. So you can imagine something very, very big, a very big building, in which different situation we just took you. Am I having a, <laughs> a, can you brain, hear us? a brain wave? I so. <laughs> um, um, the difficulty that I had at the time was, and I didn't at the time understood it, was something that was seal on itself, compact, That's, that was uh, beginning and ending in itself. And um, yeah, what I was searching at the time was something that will, in a certain way, uh, become porous or, or will shift without me knowing it. Uh, the opposite of something that will be a score that I write and something that then I play, but I know already because I write the script. Right, or the score. Um, so I try to find whatever system or ways uh, to, to counter, uh, to, to, to in a certain way break down that pattern that I had previously in my work. Uh, so the host and the cloud offer me in a certain way, uh, and I say that at one point to you, it was a, and I'm jumping, that's the way I'm thinking. Uh, <laughs> Um, an exhibition, when you think about the exhibition as a, as a, as a form or as a, we were talking about the exhibition as a medium or as a, of course, to, to in a certain way work on it. It's not like a painter who is like in his studio and he can try and if he's not happy, just drop the thing and then when he's find that enoughly coherent, then eventually make it public. Of course, with the Exhibition form, it's difficult because by a sense it's public, you know, so um, how do you make, how do you invent a lab, <laughs> you know, where you experiment exhibition, where you test experiments, as for the painter it would be the studio, you know. Um, so those and the club come with this, something that will be 
a test run of different form of display. Uh, okay, uh, the exhibition will become an exhibition of display in a certain way. Uh, but in which I will not know the outcome. So uh, it is based on the if and then system. If that, then this. Um, so there was a set of a group of people who will just uh, face different situation that I drop in this building, which was maybe seven floor plus three basement. So like really some a place that you can lost yourself very easily. With very complex, it was a, I think a student of Le Corbusier who built this uh, <coughs> building. So you have like the restaurant, the theater, the all the instance that you can imagine, a mini town. Blah, blah, blah. So yeah, so, so, so what occurred was like people facing a group of people that was my, my public in a certain way, uh, that was facing situations. This situation, they will then simply uh, say, I was saying, you just face a situation, and like a performance, a theater play, a hypno seance, uh, whatever, many, many kind of situation, life situation, and they will either copy them or try to, or modify them. So you can imagine someone see a situation, is trying to copy them, and then someone else see the person copying the thing and trying to, so, so in very fast, I have no sense of what's going on. Um, uh, and that was the trigger <laughs> to me. Um, and because he happened in, over the course of one year, in like three instances or three dates that I defined, which was celebration dates, um, I had the chance to work in between, so it was not like uh, the thing finished. So it's like, again, the, the exhibition uh, exists for a while and then, then disappear and reappear. But it gave me the chance to just, re uh, you know, refine, add, remove, uh, keep playing with the game. Um, and I start to introduce animals. Uh, I realized that when people were more tired or more drunk, or if there is something who will disturb the way they were uh, rationally behavior, behaving, then the outcome will be for me more interesting. So the more, it, so the more it will go, the more it will be in, in fact unstable. And when I visited, you mentioned also that it was a living algorithm in a way you created, and then of course came the invitation from Caroline to to Castle to Documenta, and you were also part of the. Uh, advisory group of the documenters who you visited very early yep. on. And we mm -hmm. had Rem Kolhas here earlier today who introduced the project of the countryside. And of course, uh, the title, Antilled, uh, has to do with that because mm -hmm. it has to do with fallow land, which not, you know, with non-cultivated land. Can you tell us a little bit about the genesis of this, of this amazing castle project? Um, so yeah, I mean, he, he obviously, it's, it's, he leaked the project of the host and the cloud leak out to a certain extent. Um, but uh, the host in the cloud was still, to me, um, too under my control. There was too much intentionality in it. Uh, uh, obviously, in the case of host in the cloud, it was one day, one day, one day. So, of course, it was also very short for something to have the chance to transform, grow, uh, react, adapt, evolve, um, uh, which by the end of doing those, and the client understood that, and I wanted to just basically jump to something who will, in a certain way, be, uh, yeah, where, where, where I, will, uh, I will not be the only co-product of what is happening, in a certain way. I will, in a certain way, uh, uh, have more chance to um, be surprised, um, and I wanted, starting in Austin the Cloud, to, I wanted things to not be dependent. Um, the Austin the Cloud, as I say, will happen, happen in a building in which people will, which I, at the end of the day, I invite a group of witness, I call them the witness, like basically, I don't remember, 20, 30 people that I invite from Paris at the time, randomly, more or less, and they were able to face what was going on in this situation or to see what was going on. Uh, but the situation or what would the, the person was involved in, um, what I call my operator or my agent or whatever the name is, uh, uh, they, went, they were 
they were not interacting with the public. Uh, and that was important to me uh, in, in Documenta, that, that the bees, they are really indifferent to the public. As the dog, probably less. He got, he got the track by the, you know, being photographed for a while, but, uh, or a turtle or whatever, or the plant or the, so when Caroline invited me uh, and I had the chance to, that was a, a, a yeah, a chance, uh, have the chance to be there way in advance. And, and, and I look around and finally I, I find a, a site and then we come back to this idea of the site, some, a place that was kind of, kind of enclosed. It was the compost of the a park. So the comment happened in different buildings and then there's this very big park. Um, and within the park, Caroline also have proposed that people could have uh, different houses in which they would do things. Um, and within that park, there was a compost. Uh, uh, and it was kind of enclosed by trees. So it was like a, uh, a place that have kind of a limit, but was at the same time completely uh, uh, porous. You, so you could not say, I'm in the work, I'm in, or I'm in the stage, I'm in the white cube, I'm not in the white cube. Um, and, and, and within that, to describe it, if I need to describe it, I, I guess a bit, um, there was different um, agent or different uh, entities, uh, different markers uh, uh, that I took from either the history. It has to be, for, of course, obviously, it cannot, I could not escape to a certain extent to be a personal history or the one that I have witnessed. Uh, if not personal, uh, uh, and things who have to do with documenta. Uh, so I, I, we have one oak a tree from Joseph Beuys, who was then dropped in the compost. Then a statue that I found, and which was dropped in the compost. Uh, uh, a bench of Dominique Gonzalez Foster from a previous documenta that was also dropped, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, the compost become a, a method, a methodology a methodology to, to keep going. I say, okay, you can throw some leaves, a bit some, some uh, broken, uh, whatever, uh, tile. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, in a certain way, use that methodology because in the compost, not only you do not curate the way you throw uh, the banana on the pile, you know, you just throw the banana on the pile. And that was something I was interested in, so that I would not have as much as I could uh, um, uh, decide where the elements were. Uh, some of the elements were uh, inanimate, others were uh, living uh, organisms, plants, uh, tons of plants, uh, animals. Uh, uh, animals also have collective intelligence, like the bees, obviously, uh, ants. Um, so I put the ants not so far from, from, the, from the tree of Joseph Beuys, so they will just eat the tree of Joseph, Joseph Beuys to bring it to the other, to the other, other place in the... So you have now, you have like different biorhythmic. Uh, they start to entangle. Uh, either they are conf in conflict, either they are not. Um, uh, and there's a moment where, of course, myself, I, I lost the track uh, of what is, um, and I let it with, within that uh, uh, sphere of uh, an, uh, control in a certain way. And there were so many things. I mean, it depended a lot on the weather because the day when I came, it was raining, and I think mm. the dog was hiding, and then the next day it was sunny. So it depended a lot, you know, on which day. Dorothea von Handelmann, who wrote, uh, writes the text for the catalog we're doing, for the exhibition, really lists many, many things which uh, she saw numerous. There was, of course, also a turtle wandering around, and that connects to Arrebourg. Arrebourg de Wismans, yeah. yeah. And then there was also the young man who was almost present to take care of the dogs, and there was a puppy. And then this young man had this very interesting thing. He had, and it was an accident, and, but he had this giant scar here, as if... Uh, in an interesting way, uh, his brain was has been removed to a certain extent, <laughs> and he reminded me of uh, this Locus Solus novel, <laughs> where I don't know when they visit that that place, uh, 
there's a uh, kind of a kind of a giant glass place, a bit like this one, I guess, uh, in which uh, they inject a vitali I think it's called vitaline or vita like the vitality, vitalin, something like that, in the head of, of dead people who just die, and they relieve endlessly, which is a traumatic uh, thing, they relieve endlessly um, the last moment of their life. So it's like a kind of like an automaton, but with a living human, which, and also there's a writer, there's like, so he have a collection of different people, uh, it's very beautiful uh, passage of the book. Vraiment so, Roussel. So, it to, vraiment Roussel. So, of course, yeah. So, 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 that person to me was the guy who was, of course, he was taking care about the dog. But aside that, and I knew he will just go from there to there to this, it's the only one that, in a certain way, of course, he will not do random things completely. He was a human with uh, So, uh, at least he was my automaton, you know. Uh, and it's interesting because another thing which was important for that project you told me was Mallarmé, le, le livre uh, mm -hmm. of Mallarmé. And that again ties in in such an interesting way with what happened here on this very stage this morning, you know, when Irma Boom and Ren did this new book they just did, and, and there was a, a special edition of that book which can be recomposed and regenerated endlessly. So I was very curious, because that's of course the case for Mallarmé's Le Livre, how that inspired mm -hmm. the notion of it, the artwork. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it inspired me already in the, in the, when I was doing The Host and the Cloud, it's like the book of the book. It's a book that do not exist, but it's the unless, um, I guess, become more like a ritual or a kind of a game for Mallarmé in which, of course, uh, there's a lot of parameter. Uh, at the end of the day, when you read the, all, the, all this, I mean, not the book because he didn't make it, but the book about the book, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, there's not so much that Mallarmé wrote, actually. What he thought of was all the system to the page, to the to the way the font will go, to the to the cost of the page, to the fact that it will be unlessly, unlessly, it will absorb as a as a as a dark hole. It will absorb all the books existing in a certain way, uh, um, making it a never dying book uh, uh, um, because. Uh, it turned out to be more a uh, séance, you know, a séance of uh, in which there was different kind of um, whatever people involved. Uh, I guess that was very intriguing to me as a model. Uh, and it's an interesting model also for what we're going to discuss later, which is the you know the serpentine work because it connects to that as well. And then it was around the moment of Castle we started to talk about the show at the serpentine, and then. Uh, you already, of course, were starting to, you know, think, and then Münster delayed it because you right. were very busy with Münster, uh, and uh, that's the beautiful thing also about such exhibitions. You know, the medium of the exhibition is slow. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, as Jana said in the introduction, it's not a question of a few months; it's years of preparation mm -hmm. of a show. It's a slow medium, and uh, we're going to talk about that slowness later. But before that, I wanted to ask you about about Münster, and um, uh, Münster, after a life ahead, of course, continues this idea of an ecosystem um, from Kassel, but in a very different way. It brings in even more complexity, it brings in more layers, it also brings in technology. Can you tell us about the, the genesis of after a life ahead and what, how that grew, in a way? Yeah, but well, let's say that at least for, for, for documenta, it was clearly an ecosystem, right? And if, with all what they call mean system means, but they were reducing words. But uh, where in uh, uh, after life ahead, um, you have also the, the not only the biotic but the abiotic uh, uh, getting in, and and if we consider that every let's say whatever biosystem become then yeah. In, in document, I was biosystem. So it's one system at the end of the day, even if each uh, unveiled, <laughs> to go back to that. Uh, and if, if there is different system, but it under a, a biological sphere, right? So where in, uh, Munst, uh, in Munster, yeah, right. Uh, in Munster, um, um, there was other uh, system. I guess what I, start to be interested there was to entangle different modality of system, right? Rather than to say, so 
the description and then the flat description of the <laughs> of for the ones who don't know. It's just it was a abandoned. Uh, I always end up in this abandoned place. I don't know why. But, um, I know why actually, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it was a nice skating ring. So very 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 large large building. It's like a kind of place where you could put a plane or something nearly. Um, flat concrete, where usually, they, normally, there will be the ice, and sometimes they will do events, and then a s seats. And uh, we, uh, and I didn't really, I was fighting with this one, trying to <laughs> find a way not to add walls, or not to just have something that was just one giant space that you can, again, uh, go back, going back to the host in the cloud, overtake. In, in one gaze, right? So basically to comprehend or to dominate, or to master in one, like, okay, I got it, you know? So uh, in order to create uh, uh, complexity and things who are indistinguishable, uh, I needed, I did need in a certain way, not a labyrinth to just for the sake of losing ourselves, but at least uh, a different scale of things the possibility that different scale of things um, uh, could, uh, in a certain way, um, interplay um, or be interdependent. Maybe that also was something that I saw in, in, in documenta in this ecosystem. That I, what was interesting me at the time was something who was interconnected and I understood, oh, maybe in Munster, because I introduced something which is basically either digital or, or, or mechanic, or uh, then I was I had to push it, and, and what was interconnected become interdependent. So working on that structure was like what took me my six months of working on it mainly. Aside the physical work of cutting with a giant chainsaw, or whatever the, the name of that thing, this giant blade. Uh, cutting the whole uh, um, floor of the ice skating, which was concrete like that. And we took um, this, oh, on, I never remember the name of that, Automation, which yeah. is, uh, I think, something like that. Automaton? Uh, no, 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 no. That's Archimede, uh, it's a puzzle. Automation, it's called. Uh, at first, C C I O N, I never know how to say it. <laughs> uh, is it the one which is written Stomachium? Yeah. And then sometimes there's no the S, sometimes there's the S, depending on how you... S-T-O-M-A-C-I-C-H-I-O-N. -O 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 which is basically, -O it's a puzzle. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, to make it more simple, actually, it, yeah, it makes no sense to say it like that. It's a, it's a, it's a game of reason. It's to, re it's to reason it. So it's, it's a system of reason. Uh, uh, the system of reason, I just overlap it, overlap it, overlap it, until it became a pattern that just basically dig the whole floor until like two or three meters down and uh, the, 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 um, uh, the floor, the surface of this ice skating. And we nearly reach, I mean, we reach uh, water, but um, which was the, whatever, the, the current water. And interestingly enough, it is more an accident than an anecdote, but funny anecdote, or interesting anecdote, not funny anecdote. Uh, uh, it was exactly where the, the, the last uh, ice age uh, floor arrived. So you will have under the, 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 the ice skating ring, you will have the sand of the last glaciation, which was, you know, a, a, a good surprise. Uh, once that floor was cut, of course, as you can imagine, it was an excavation with machines, so it, it, the whole floor was dig out, so it became nearly a, a place you could drifting, finding waters and, and, and drifting. And on that place I had, there was the ceiling and I uh, opened the ceiling. There was some shapes in the she ceiling that was these pyramids. And I thought that was the only, sometimes, you know, it's like the punctum of Bart in photography, you know, when he always tried to find the thing of the image, like, nah. Um, and to me, in a certain way, it was the Sometimes the space have a punctum, you know, have a, a, a translation in space, of course. Right? There's a, they have some the particularity, what makes that place not another place, basically. That you can say, oh, why we not do that elsewhere? Because here there's that, this mini... Da -da. And that was this black pyramid, like a kind of motif of black pyramid on the ceiling, that was very 80s, that was very much this early moment where, of course, 
mean me being from whatever being born in 62 you know i saw the guy with the atta the like what do you say attaché case it's english attaché case no the whatever ah, in the attaché case the man who works bureau whatever hmm? briefcase you know the guy of the corporate with the briefcase and then there's the the the, the line like that and then there's the horizon a little bit purple and then there's some kind of ball or, or pyramid, very simplistic shape. Um, the fantasy of the future, you know, the fantasy of the, of the digital future uh, uh, that was completely um, uh, promoted as, a, as, of course, the, the ultimate horizon. Um, so that, in a certain way, I opened this thing, we cut them out, <laughs> we remove them, we animate them, the water will go in and out. And within that was uh, an aquarium with a uh, conus textile pattern uh, that will, we read the, the pattern of that, uh, of that shell, which is the, the root 30, which is an automaton, a simple automaton. And it will basically uh, trigger uh, uh, the opening or the closing of this, uh, of this um, 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 reverse pyramid. And there was, on the side <coughs> of that, there was uh, an incubator with cancer cell and uh, there were sensors in the space, as there is now at the, at the Serpentine. And the different sensors in the space would, in a certain way, uh, be affected by the condition, obviously, whatever, temperature, different, different kind of conditions. Uh, these variables will just go into the incubator, change the condition in the incubator, making the, the cancer cell either accelerating the division or not. And by doing so, they will arrive to a threshold, and the threshold will trigger a shape that actually you will only be able to see through an iPhone, or through a phone, whether iPhone or not, <laughs> for phone. Um, uh, um, and you will have, it's an uh, um, augmented reality app that uh, eventually you will, be, you will be able to jump another kind of uh, reality so you will have the actual reality and you have the augmented one interlinked in a certain way, affecting each other. So each time there, is, there will be a certain threshold, there will be that shape will move in the space. Um, when two of this, this shape was black pyramid, so of course if we eventually we do a photo of that, an image of that, you will confuse the actual pyramid and the, the virtual pyramid. They will kind of overlap in a certain way. Uh, when two of these shapes will just go close to each other, they will produce, not to say the word give birth, <laughs> uh, uh, another one. And then eventually when there was two small ones, etc., etc., etc. When they will reach a, th a threshold, they will affect the aquarium and then it will affect things. So basically there was an interdependency uh, of all this um, agent within the space. And it's fascinating because this afternoon uh, I found actually, uh, it's still on my phone, you know, from the visit. In, in Münster, and of course, you know, via this app, you extended the approach in a way uh, also into a field of kind of technologically generated images. And that brings us to the, to the Serpentine show we're going to talk about today as the main part of right, this, right, right. Uh, of this right. conversation. Uh, <clears throat> and I remember, you know, we talked in Münster, and we also had many conversations about this idea of you wanting to kind of, would you ever come back again to moving image projections? Uh, because that wasn't clear, kind of in Münster and Kassel, if there would be a return, because you had clearly left that idea. But would you come back to that? You, you once told me it would really be only if you could free yourself from the predicament, in a way, of yeah. the loop. Yeah. Of the loop. And so I wanted to ask you to tell us about the beginning of your reflections on the show at the seventh of the show and, and how Umwelt was born. No, I know. I end up doing <laughs> <laughs> moving image where I start not wanting it. It's like very tricky. Uh, <clears throat> but um, no, yeah, I got tired personally. Uh, um, 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 uh, maybe more in the nineties and early whatever two thousand, I was still in uh, very attracted by moving image films, and I got tired by the linearity of it. Uh, even at the editing, I got tired to edit movies because I knew, okay, then if I put this image there, and then of course I change the meaning, which is interesting in itself. It's not that I'm not criticizing that. Mm -hmm. It's just that I personally got bored, uh, finding myself again and again and again 
I became too skilled at it. You know, like uh, it was not. Uh, um, I didn't discover anything for myself anymore uh, because not only of this linearity, the editing system, uh, and within the, 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 the actual exhibition, of course, if it's a short film, the loop. Uh, uh, and I wanted to escape that, but already uh, in the in the early 2000 when I did this, whatever, this French pavilion in Venice, there was this idea of the program, was, was outside the film, who would say, you go, you don't go, you shut up, you da 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 so, But that was out extra diegetic, right? Um, but the extra diegetic was just a tempo, and it became again an object. Whatever you could just say, do this, do this, do that, do that, do that. So basically, to choreograph program and exhibition, it became again and again another pyramid, not physical one, but temporal one, right? A compact. It became, a com it became again a compact uh, um, thing. And, and, and so, yeah, so I escaped it. Uh, I, I was more interested to see if the screen or the moving image could actually um, become more like uh, the rest of what I have done before, like whatever, whatever the cancer variator or, or, or the, 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 the dog with the pink leg or the, you know, I mean, that they become ag agent and they, they will uh, adapt, react, change, uh, self-generate. And that's what I um, was looking for for a while. And can you tell us about the title? Because the title is Umwelt and it means environment in German, but it's spelled <laughs> with a double U, U. and mm. uh, you told me when you came up with the title that it's connected to von Uxkel's work. Yeah, von Uxkel, I mean, I'm simplifying <laughs> von Uxkel, yeah. uh, uh, but, but uh, Welt being um, 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 uh, an environment, so a world self, um, uh, self-oriented in a certain way. Uh, self center um, which which means that every entity uh, have uh, we have vision here knows that that so we have our sense and we have a connective a certain form of cognitive uh, whatever behavior and and development and 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 the bat will have another one because they they have a sonar so we will not expand the bat etc so that, that's the envelope meaning the envelope meaning that there is many entity in the room <laughs> but they can be co-present, but they will not perceive the same way the bat, eventually a worm, and me in the same room, we will be co-present, but, but we will not share the same world or perceive the same world, basically then share the same world. Um, so there's a separation. Um, uh, um, so I am um, here for the exhibition. In a, in a more speculative approach, I would say, I, I, I decided to call it you and Welt, like you, like you say, utopia or unprecedented, unpredictable, un, which you is un. Uh, so not un Welt, not a world uh, self-center. <laughs> so as a, as, a, as a possibility that what normally limit, restrain our sense, can be bypass, potentially be bypass. Uh, so we were talking about pre-language last night. <laughs> uh, um, something that, uh, yeah, something that eventually, if shared by minds, which I understand, if informed by sensation, then by then of course limited by this thing. But how can potentially? Uh, you share uh, uh, um, images, at least for now. I don't think what I've done down there have to do with reason. So the, the word intelligence, when he covered the thing, yeah, he has to do more with sensation than he has to do with reasoning, obviously. But maybe to create image yourself or for yourself, in yourself, um, uh, being a subject, uh, creating, and so basically imagination. Uh, can potentially be a common share. And it's also uh, in the process that you, I remember then, told us about Japan and about this laboratory. And I mean, you've since the 90s uh, always spoken about Billy Kluver and the experiments in 
Art and Technology, mm -hmm. EAT, and you know it's maybe time for NEAT need for new <laughs> experiments in art and technology. And that clearly, you know, is a case in point because you actually uh, realize this exhibition and very much in a dialogue with a scientist and with a laboratory, the Kamitani Research Labs in, in Kyoto. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened there and about your encounter and how that really triggered or prompted the work? I mean, I read, I read that as a news uh, in a newspaper, and it, of course, it strikes me instantly. I mean, uh, the idea that, you, of course, you will be able to, of course, the newspaper, they always uh, inflate, uh, make it more sensational. Um, let's say you read thought, which is then what is thought, you know? Uh, someone is thinking an image, then you can say thought, but thought in that regard, right? Not thought, a complex thought, but it's already okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's impressive that that so basically, if I should maybe I should just dryly um, <laughs> describe the process. Yeah, I think that would be great, <laughs> I think yeah. I did it like twenty times last night. Um, so what they are doing down there, which is more or less, it's a department. Uh, it's, it's, it's a research department. It's brain computer interface. Uh, what they, sometimes they call it synthetic, whatever telepathy. Or it have many names, different approach. I'm sure if I'm using that word, probably the the, word, the lab lab is not down there is not really um, uh, agree with that. But anyway, what they are doing is this: they are scanning uh, uh, through MRI in a certain way. They are doing an MRI of someone uh, who is uh, thinking about an image. So let's say a cat. I'm thinking about a cat. The person go in MRI, think about the cat, think about the cat, and they take a brain wave uh, of that uh, at the moment that person is is thinking about the cat, the image of a cat. Uh, uh, this brain wave, I simplify again because it's way more complex than that, uh, become a pattern, and this pattern, it's de decoded. Uh, this pattern go through multi uh, neural network. Uh, which have a data bank of uh, millions of images. It's called generic in the sense that it's not a biased uh, uh, bank. I, it's not trees or f whatever. It's not that I'm going to try to, you know, like the deep dream where you just put all the dogs and then you look like a dog or a bottle look like a dog or whatever. Anything look like a dog. Uh, in that regard, it's generic image. For them, it makes sense because what they want is to make sure the image they give to imaging and the image they have as a result resemble to say, okay, it works, right? So, so to me, it was very fascinating that, you know, in a lazy, poetic way, I could say, I just need to think and it print, you know? <laughs> I don't, we don't, I, I just think it and then it, it happened in the, in, the, in the serpentine. <laughs> but, but, uh, so that's the telepathic thing. Yeah, you know, that you don't need anymore to, yeah. you can bypass. There's, there's many, he opened many, of course, uh, it's a, I have, still have not completely um, uh, master or understand what, all, all what that implies. And <coughs> I, I actually want to work more with this lab. I mean, I have like future projects in my mind at least uh, 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 to keep going and keep working uh, with this lab. But, there's a kind of co-production in a certain way, or collective production of imagination between uh, between two kind of intelligence, right? So, so it's it's what's lie, what's there, it's what lie between two intelligence. Uh, um, uh, and to me, yeah, yeah, to, to me that of course that's something in, uh, that's very interesting. Um, not only that you can bypass that's because that's the by, by, it's like by default then you can bypass uh, expression. I don't need to just basically go to the ladder of the making, right? So the making is bypass, um, which is the sense, the sense is bypass. But of course, you open simply the possibility to say that uh, you can share, uh, you can share uh, uh, images, you can share imagination, uh, and potentially, and that's, more like a speculative aspect that that will be shared, whatever animal, machine, or humans, right? So, so that is more a speculative uh, approach to mine. And so it's almost like you said uh, a medium. It's like a new medium. 
Yeah, because once you start to understand, oh, so I don't need to, you don't need to take the form of a sculpture or of a song or a dance or a painting or whatever, whatever mode of expression we have, the palette, the, the whatever the palette, the palette is not English, or whatever, whatever, the spectrum. Um, and then you can start to think, yeah, okay, so, yeah, if I say or think this and then machine do it or machine say or send signal and I think it, or we do, this, we do that through, of course, synthetic uh, <laughs> telepathy. Uh, then, of course, the, at the beginning, we can just say, Pierre, take the glass, or whatever, or <laughs> glass. <laughs> That's very simple. But then there will be a moment, though, of course, that as a, as a primal, as a primal um, uh, technology, and, and using only um, to visualize uh, imagination, you can start to think, how do I, how that uh, beam, what is specific or what is particular to that thing that do not need to be actualized. Because by actualizing something, then of course you have to go down the ladder of whatever, that thing, that matter, that thing, that painting, or that thing, or that decision, or that whatever, da, da, da. You go in the actual, you, you confront with the, the gravity, with the, with the, with the contingency, with uh, everything that go with the ladder of the actuality. I was just thinking we should probably get Robert Sheldrake here to see the show because he, you know, did so much on, on telepathy. Mm -hmm. But one thing also which is so fascinating is, you know, we can kind of reconnect it to what you said about Münster and what you said about Castle and about this interdependence, not this notion of interdependence, because these images you described, these sequence on, I on images on the screens, are, as we can see at the Serpentine, in constant process of, of reconstruction. Uh, but then also <laughs> they are permanently modified by there are these external factors. There is the light, there is the temperature, there is the humidity level, there are the 100,000 flies. Exactly. Can yeah, you yeah. tell us about that? Yeah, it's like uh, we all know when an ID is exposed or exhibit, then this ID change, right? So the condition in which an ID come from an intuition to his actualization and the moment where it become public, you say that to your friend or to an audience. Uh, um, it depends on the condition. If we are in the, in the middle of the second, the first world war, in the middle of the mud, it will be different than in uh, New York uh, today or in uh, the middle of uh, whatever. So the condition under which something um, happen, modify that thing. And so uh, uh, if you say an idea or an imagination, once it became an imagination that become public, right? Um, to me, the moment where it changes is this moment where it become, yeah, which appear in front of the presence, the case, when it's eventually discussed, you know, I discussed with a friend uh, last night and I say, oh, da, 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 and say, ah, no, 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 and I say, oh, yeah, right, yeah, da, da, da. okay, then, yeah, my shit. Yeah, so I had to modify my thought. Uh, uh, um, or I say, no, I disagree, da, 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 whatever. But even if I stay on my position, I have already have to defend my thought, so I, have, I've modif I make it stronger, whatever, weaker, stronger, but anyway, once it, it's out, uh, uh, it's modified. And so to me here was like to make it more simple, there's these images, there's this different uh, image that I give to that person in, in, to be imagined in, 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 in Japan. And then he sort one by one all these images who are to me in a certain way composing the situation. Uh, uh, um, and each one now is a, is a, is a each, each, image I give to Imagine is a film because, of course, it's the process of optimization. Uh, so you have, like, whatever, different duration uh, of this moving. I don't, I don't know if I should call them film. I prefer to call that moving image. It's not really films, these things, but whatever. It's maybe a neologism. Yeah, I, think I prefer to say moving image because they are not films. Uh, uh, but anyway, this, this block of moving image, <laughs> uh, uh, there's many by screens. And and sometimes they change pool, they change uh, location, and the condition of exhibition, so to come back to that, whatever it is, the classic white cube, okay, I'm careful about the light, not too much light, not too much uh, temperature for the painting, not too much, so the classic uh, condition 
of exhibition that usually are there to, to separate in a certain way. Uh, and now the one, the thing that I'm triggering, okay, a bit more sound, a bit more, uh, a bit more light, a bit, uh, and the presence of the people, whatever they, the physical presence, or when they are facing the screens. And, uh, so all that in a certain way stop the image. So this, you have this kind of chimera image made of fragment of past, uh, moving, moving, moving. So in a certain way, the neural network is optimizing and saying, not that, not that, not that, not that one, not that one, not that one. And I never show the result because I'm more interested about this, this, uh, this process of recognition. And, and the condition of the exhibition, including us, are affecting. So the more we are looking in a certain way, or the more we are present, or the more the conditions are, are changing, the more the image is hysteric. <laughs> and, and it stops. But the fact that the image is hysteric do not change the problem because then you face a fixed image of a chimera, which of course now you in your brain say, someone said to me last night, oh, it's the migrant on the boat, oh, it's the trash. Or it's the... So each one has his own uh, experience, of course, memory uh, in life, and of course have this, whatever, millions of not only image sense, because of course as you try to remember the face of even your mother, it's, it's, it, not only it's not an image, it's a set of things who come in your mind, but it's never fixed. It's not like a tick -tick. eventually, if it's fixed, it's because you remember a photo of your mother rather than your mother. <laughs> so, yeah. So, as they stop, then it's you are part. You are doing the same process. And it's also porous in the sense of that you talked earlier on about leaks and the building leaking and uh, mm. it's kind of interesting because I found notes from our show, you know, at the Musée d'Armodin de la République de Paris when I interviewed you for the Musée d'Armodin show and, you know, you, we both lived in Paris at the time, you, you live now in New York, I live in London, it's kind of amazing, little did we know 12 years ago that we would actually do this show in Kensington Gardens and Hyde Park because, but we talked about Hyde Park in this conversation 12 years ago because we talked about the Crystal Palace mm -hmm. and the kind of porousness inside, outside, you know, of yeah. the Crystal Palace and the Serpentine, you wanted it from the beginning to be kind of porous. You wanted there to be, um, uh, of course, you know, the flies are also leaving the building. We have them also are, in the office. They burn, they are, burn, they are being born. It's like oh, so weird in English, but yeah. that's the way to say it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess they are being born, yeah. Uh, yeah, in the building, growing and eventually dying or leaving. Yes, so the porosity is something very interesting. And there is the dust, no? Because of course we all the carry dust, yeah. the dust into the city when you walk through the exhibition and then you leave the building. And uh, the dust, of course, has to do also with the history of, of the gallery. When with Rebecca Lewin and, uh, and you, we, we had this meeting. Um, uh, early on with the show, you said that you wanted to actually liberate these different layers of paint from previous exhibitions. So every show since 2000, since the certain time was renovated, is there. We found Karen Kilimnik, uh, we <laughs> found Leon Golub, you know, many layers. Yeah. Um, and so, of course, you know, Panofsky says the future is invented with fragments of the past. But can you tell us a little bit about the porousness, the dust, and also this layering, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean the, the porosity go against the to me the compact object, the the, 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 the object autonomous show of himself, compact, uh, uh, and I since a, yeah since those and the cloud already I think I'm trying to in a certain way. That's what I was saying to the Austin Cloud. So to retake an example of that is you go in a gallery and you see uh, at the time it performance. To me the word performance is like. Uh, uh, so in a certain way, it's really hysterical, the performance. It's like you, it's really addressed to, you know, like, look at me. No, no, no. It's like, this is exactly the opposite of what I was trying to do. So in the host in the cloud is to say, oh, I'm just, I'm bored. Uh, in fact, when I go to see a performance, uh, I'm more interested about this person uh, doing something in the back, uh, the one in the doing something. Oh, there's someone. Or when you go to theater and there's someone going crank or someone. On the, so at the end of the day, all that is part of the events. There's, of course, there's the master event that we're supposed to be dominated by or, or, or inclined to follow. But then there's this other event. So to me, that's what I was trying to do: is to try to create. The host and was to say, okay, I'm going to do like 200. 200 of them. I'm going to throw them and they're going to leave and they're going to affect each other and they're going to eat each other and they're going to cope each other and they're going to reproduce and they're going to die and they're going to... So the porosity is really in a way to break down that form of 
to try to distinguish something, to extract it, to exhibit it, you know, and, and, and to drag it in the white tube, perfectly sealed, and, uh, you know, and as we know, ev everything is entered, as Monsieur Morton says, so nothing can be compacted and closed in a certain way, that's a complete fantasy. Uh, so yeah, uh, in, in the space, yeah, I, w uh, I wanted that porosity to, to, to break down that in a certain way, again, uh, because I did it in a few times, but the autonomy of that, of that space. Now, here it was like in a different way. <laughs> we have five or six people, like just the wall. Uh, so I didn't have, because I, of course the, the, the one that maybe you have seen of mine was the one that I go like that, and so it, it's very linear to a certain extent, go from the surface toward the past, so it's between, that's something that stands between the present and the past, and of course show you the different layers and the different history of the, of the place. Uh, um, where here, of course, it's totally not that because, and I didn't want to start to choose, I'd, of course, I always say, of course, it varies, like after three hours, to everybody go on the right, so maybe just go on the left, but more or less, there was like five people doing that randomly, and that different, um, depth. So what you see at the end, it's, it's quite interesting, is the limit of time, you know, you, you see different limit of past and time, uh, uh, which to me was like, yeah, I, it was important to have, to have that, as in a certain way the neural network is really endlessly trying, 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 trying to, 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 to compose this, this in a certain way is so big that you, I'm so big, it's not so, so big, but enough that you cannot master all the layers of temporality. Uh, and this temporality, they get material and they fall and they, whatever. And of course, there is also the smell. There is the olfactory dimension, so as to say. <laughs> Margaret Mead wrote the text um, more than 50 years ago where, you know, she said from an anthropological point of view, it's very strange how little time people actually spend in front of artworks, only a few seconds, I think, on average. Uh, and of course, the exhibition is such a free ritual, but at the same time, uh, she lamented a kind of a lack of attachment. You know, she said the exhibition right. is a kind uh, of a, a know, ritual. It's, it's a, a question, ritual question of, of attachment. attachment. Yeah. And, and this yeah. question of the attachment, you know, she describes can be recreated maybe if we connect the exhibition to a more multi-sensory environment. As, I mean, she describes rituals. She, she describes processions and rituals, and I was kind of wondering uh, if you can tell a little bit about that, because it's a very multi-sensory exhibition in that sense, and there is a special mm -hmm. olfactory dimension, and there is, of course, also a soundtrack, yeah, which yeah. is, again, the brain. Yeah, the soundtrack is brainwave, uh, but not of the actual person who is in the MRI. But I wanted to have sound on the true sense, uh, and I find brainwave, so it became, we turned brainwave into sound. Um, rather than to have whatever random sound to put a kind of music or whatever, some sound to go with the film. Uh, the sense are different sense that kind of overlap the category of the image that I give to be imaging to that person, whatever they are on the, on the side of the machine, the human or the animal. Uh, and yes, it triggers different sense because it's a paradox in a certain way. I'm showing here something that normally it would not be, I'm showing here a process, but in a certain way, it's like a lettre volée, you know, the, the lettre volée when you address a letter to someone and someone intercepts the letter and just look at it. So in a certain way, that's, this exhibition is, is kind of that, uh, because for the lab, of course, they need to see what they give to Imagine and the result, because that's the work to, to be factual and repeat the, the experience as any scientific experiment is. Uh, but of course, the whole point is to just do uh, like brain, brain or brain computer interface. So something that you don't need to make public. Mm -hmm. uh, um, by making it public, I, I trigger again the visual where I'm trying to get rid of it. You know, so the sense and the and the sense and the sound are also there to to trigger. Uh, whatever, uh, it's like Madeleines, there is different Madeleines, post Madeleines. Uh, like memory triggers, yeah. That they have the way you also do the same, whatever, and the sound also to a certain extent. Now, 
it's very exciting because you know an interview always hides another interview. It's a bit like a Russian matroshka. I always believe there should be an interview within the interview. And before we open it up to all of your questions for Pierre, we now have some special questions from Ian Cheng. We ask Ian Cheng to submit a few questions because, of course, it's fascinating because, in a way, uh, uh, Ian, uh, who had the exhibition here of Bob a few months ago at the Serpentine, is your former collaborator, you, uh, you mentored uh, Ian, one can say. Uh, and before reading Ian's questions to you, I have one last question in transition to that. Um, Pierre, you have said in a certain way, and that's a quote, you said, I construct a play. I don't want to exhibit something to someone anymore. I want okay. to do the reverse. Mm -hmm. I want to exhibit someone to something. And it's interesting that this idea of reversing the exhibition condition is connected to Bob in a way. Because of course this idea of uh, this AI you know, figure that growing and evolving at all hours of the day, I mean it was a, a non-stop thing uh, mm -hmm. uh, at the gallery. Um, so I wanted to ask you more how an artist can create this condition in an exhibition and if you can tell us more about this idea of, of, uh, of constructing a play and if you are thinking about the characters in your work. If I'm constructing a play? Yeah. But you mean it in which way? Yeah, because you, you like the work exists beyond the exhibition. I, it's a way I to like decenter, no? And yeah, to right, 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 right. The so, power. so, so, uh, yeah, yeah, more like not the play, the, the, not the play, but more like, yeah, how to in a certain way. Uh, but once, once in a certain way, you shift a bit toward. Um, the living, or at least dynamic system that can self-generate whatever biotic or abiotic in the sense of Yan, for example. Um, no, actual or virtual, that's not even the point. Uh, uh, then when s once this entity uh, can grow, evolve, react, adapt, um, then of course they have their life. And that's the moment where suddenly you think, oh, okay, they have their life. So um, they don't need to be unlessly, as they have their life, sometimes they are, you are there, and then in probably half an hour there will be no one in this room. <laughs> and if I am a bottle, I don't change so much. Yes, I will change, but it will take me maybe a million years. Uh, but of course, if something is already something that change, have the capacity to mutate uh, with all the, the, the contingency you go with. Uh, um, it is to me interesting that, that um, it is not all, it's, it go beyond in a certain way uh, the exhibition uh, 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 moment or the exhibition format. Um, is that the question? Yeah, and you, you, you said <laughs> the other day that it's not made for us even if influenced yeah, by, because by our presence, be, right? Be because at that moment where it become, it's indifferent. Uh, I mean, the tree, which is right there, grow. Of course, if you just start to cut the roots or if you pour whatever toxin on it, it will be affected by you. But otherwise, it just grow indifferent to your presence, right? It is bound to you. Uh, it, it can be influenced by you but it's still indifferent, That's, that doesn't change. Uh, um, so the work do not need the public. <laughs> There's a moment where it does, it's not made for us. Let's say for us, maybe it need, it's, um, but it's not made for us, it's not addressed to us, like TV or like whatever. Advertising, it's not made, or, or exhibition, it's not hysteric, it, do, it doesn't leave because someone look at it. It doesn't need the gaze to exist. You can bypass that little, you know, need to be, uh, to present itself uh, and always be ready to be seen, uh, to exist. He can live his life as a work uh, uh, without that need. And that is so way. fascinating, you know, we read the other day, the, I don't know how you call it in English, but you know, the guest book, the golden book where people can leave their comments about the exhibition, <laughs> uh, about Ian's show and, you know, a visitor said, I came all the way from Birmingham and, you know, Bob ignored me. <laughs> which is kind of, which is yeah, kind exactly. of what, what you say, right? Yeah, of course. 
But and that leads us in really a, in, to a, in, a, in a beautiful digital <laughs> version of it. Absolutely, of course, and 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 because as he start to gain a, a near consciousness. Mm -hmm. Then of course he <laughs> he's alive and maybe there's moment that <laughs> he and he can react and act and he's indifferent and, and that leads there's us moment where he don't want to appear like as you were mentioning last time there's a bear who turn and then whatever okay whatever and uh, that leads us the interview within the interview the questions which arrived this morning from Ian Chen so first question from Ian to Pierre how do you begin constructing a world? What are the first essential steps in the process for you? A feeling, a character, a set of laws, a of personal experience? Flows, yeah. Uh, it's, it's uh, uh, I don't think I have a first. <laughs> I don't think there's a first. Uh, it depends. And some, and it's, and yeah. It depends, and, and, and the, the journey after uh, depends on, okay, if, if, a, if a series of whatever, a set of laws or structure uh, or system or arrive first, then of course it is sometimes more difficult to incorporate or without forcing the character to be part of that whatever system. Uh, in the opposite, characters, they can come. Uh, there is character. I, I, I like to recall this idea of the character. To, to, to what I call character is a person that is entangled is a in a narrative, right? So there's a person, and if the person is then taken in a narrative, eventually it's a personage in French, we say, right? So a personage is, a, is a someone which is basically entangled in a narrative. And the character also, I understand it in a Deleuzean way of like the conceptual character. So character come not only as a figure, but he come with, to take Yan word, a bag of beliefs, right? He, he come with loaded um, of meaning. Uh, or beliefs, this is different from meaning, but... Uh, at least believe of different structure or be, be, be different narrative. So, yeah, if I, if the character if the character arrive first, then I'm trying to see how. And to me, it's interesting because, really honestly, when when it happened to me, of course, I, as any artist or whatever, sometimes you just in the street and oh, you see something or whatever, or you read something or you online and then whatever something pop up, it interests you and say. Ah, I would love to that be uh, an adjunct in my work or be part of the work. And, but you're not going to force the thing to be in, you know, so you wait. <laughs> and, and if you find another one, another one. And I find myself sometimes in so tricky thing where I have like three things who have absolutely, a completely heterogeneous, who are unfriendly to each other. And I have to need in a certain, to find, um, so the structure become interesting because the structure is given as to kind of either accommodate or allow the world to, 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 to function with these characters that are apparently not friendly. If you say a game, a cancer cell, and a peacock, then say, ooh, okay, uh, so how am I going to make that three things going together? Um, so and and I and I do that and and sometimes I force myself for months to try to make them play. So in a certain way, the structure it's more inventive in a certain way rather than to say, okay, I I select what I like and I know that structure and I overlap them and then boom, boom. So it's predictable. It's uh, and yeah. So yeah, to answer that, yes. And, and, that and personal situation. It, of course, I mean, like it's difficult to say that. Yeah, across things in life, as everyone, and of course, I'm yeah, affected by things more or less, and it's, it have impact um, the work. And that already answers, you know, Ian's second question in one go, because you know, Ian wanted to know not only where your worlds are coming from, but also the characters. You know, like a dog with a pink leg, a monkey with a human face, a white penguin, and you've answered that with the yeah, characters. Yeah. But he then has another very important question. Here, the question from Ian. On one hand, the art world, he writes, is very excited and accommodating to help produce birth a world. 
so to, to help a world to be born. No? To be born. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the other hand, he writes, a world anticipates that it will require long-term maintenance, which the art world is mostly unequipped for dealing with. Vrai. Art maybe wants an image of a world, but not the responsibility for it. Yes. Is art enough? Where would you want your worlds to live? Uh, I will say I agree with him. I, um, yeah, the maintenance of at uh, once you to interest about the emergence of complexity, and you are trying that that complexity um, evolve, change over a certain period of time. Then, of course, there's a moment where he requests more, like the aquarium, for example, mm -hmm. uh, that I do so once in a while. So, of course, it's a, it's a constrained ecosystem, a kind of um, an image. But, of course, the day you stop, uh, you stop <laughs> the whole image collapse. <laughs> I don't know if the work is a work anymore or whatever. So, of course, he, 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 you attach to the and you attach you have to, to the responsibility to make it um, keep going, um, evolve. When now, when that evolution, when it comes to entropy, when it comes to unpredictable force, uh, contingency, accident, blah, 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 when is the moment where, uh, yeah, it's, there's a dilemma between living, letting the thing let it be, let it grow, <laughs> uh, change, but then there's a moment you say, oop, hola, the, 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 he, he, went, he went out of track. Then when I say that word, I already bounce myself to the, back to the intentional point where I'm trying to escape. So it's a, it is not an easy, um, and now is the, word, is the art world or the art whatever was the thing, is the art enough? No, where would probably, you want your probably no. And then the, there was a third. Where would you want your world to live? I mean, where where he can actually uh, when he can actually evolve, and and yeah, when he, when he can actually uh, um, age, uh, give birth. Uh, um, when a world is composed by things that uh, the, the, to generate the the, the, the emergence, to a place that will allow uh, whatever actual and virtual, because I think I'm mean, more interested about this this, this overlapping. Uh, yeah, where, where we will be able to sustain in a certain way. So not aware, but how a condition in under which it could exist. Ian's next question for Pierre. How do you stay in love <laughs> with a project? I'm joking. How, Hello. Yeah. How do you stay in love with a project over a long period of development time? I mean, it goes back to what we said earlier that exhibition you know, is slow and projects are but slow. But the same thing, if you grow a project, I mean, every artist has this metaphor of, oh, you know, the, my, my works is my child, blah, 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 blah. But then once it's really living, then it became, the metaphor became narrower, you know? Uh, whatever again in Bob. Let's see how he's going to see when, when it's going to be Bob will have reproduced and have. <laughs> <laughs> or if I take a part of Bob, <laughs> of the program of Bob and plug it. <laughs> um, I think he will have an attach. I think the attachment comes from the intimacy you have with things. Okay, I can answer that. Okay, voila. So, I think love comes from the intimacy you have with something, the attention you have, the closeness, the proximity, and attention you have with something. The more, of course, you are witnessing that thing, uh, subtleness, change, mutation, uh, refinement, the more you um, comprehend and be comprehended by that thing, it be there's a moment where, of course, uh, uh, yeah, it becomes it become something that you basically in love, whatever, not so much to jump on the metaphor of a, your child but, or your, someone you love, but of course. The, and, and because there is time, 
because there is time passing, because there's a change, because you witness, you have a shared nearly experience uh, with the thing, and because you have a shared experience, then, yeah, so, so yeah, I don't know if it's exactly the question, but, but, but to say, is to say, because there's time that you share with something, and uh, then you care about these things. But that, I don't know if it was exactly no, the it's question. a beautiful answer, because that keeps <laughs> you, you know, to a project over a long period of time. And how, now, do, how do I see the project? How do yeah. I see after? I see it as something who have grown. That's basically, and, and yeah. because I see it, because it evolves. That's what I'm saying, anyway. And these were the questions from Ian Cheng. Yet today he sent a bonus question. The bonus question from Ian to Pierre is, one time, and that was obviously when you know, Ian worked for you, uh, one time you said to me, every artwork needs a coefficient of stupidity. <laughs> I agree, but what <laughs> did you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean that it is part that I mean that uh, that thing can, that it's interesting that to, to, to open it as one factor, as one parameter of a complexity. It should not be dismissed. <laughs> and it seems to be very shared anyway and common. So, so I think it should be, it should be part. Um, I don't think a work. Yeah, I mean. It's not that the work should be stupid, but it's that, in reverse, a, a work who, who, come, who come to display a position of, of uh, in a certain way, in a very power-like way, uh, smartness for the sake of it. I have a doubt on that thing, I would say. I need stupidity in the sense of something which is uh, uncertain and resonate out of track, let, let go, something that cannot be completely a formula, uh, something that is not something that you can master, something that is a bit fucked up in a certain way, and that part is important to me. Um, that could not be a more <laughs> wonderful conclusion. Yeah, thank, you so, thank you so, thank you so, so much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Merci beaucoup.